Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to SE Aviation and to this next part of our Bogota to Miami video in which I'm going to be showing you how to do the descent. So when you get to your top of descent, as soon as you get to it, what you're going to do is that you're going to press the vertical speed button. Here I already pressed it because I forgot to record, I'm very sorry, but it's super easy. Remember how we had it set for our cruise? You just press vertical speed and it's going to be doing exactly this descending to keep the airspeed that you want it to keep as it's doing right now in this case we're going to prepare the descent so right here in our overhead panel we should be turning on the landing lights and all those things later uh, when we get our landing clearance but i'm going to do it right now so that we don't forget later therefore we just can't we just can not concentrate anymore in this panel so we're gonna forget this overhead panel for now so let's now go here down and check our comms so I have Navigraph charts here is all on my PC I'm gonna leave a link in the description for Navigraph charts and I see that Miami approach frequency is 124.85 so let's can take that 14.85 then we have tower frequency, which is one three one two three point nine or one two three point nine or perfect. So we have that set. For that, what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to select some ILS things. So I have here my chart, and we cannot select the IL the frequency yet because if you do so, you're gonna have serious trouble with. Well, joining because that's a, a book explain has, but you want to start to look at the ILS. So I'm right now here looking, and it looks very well. We're gonna be doing a nice approach, okay? So uh, let's match the heading indicator here. And so if we go to plan mode, you can see that here we have this grid thing, which makes some very strange curves. So what we're going to do is that after, actually after this waypoint called Luffly, Luffly um, we're going to be disconnecting the Elnaf autopilot and flying and heading select autopilot. You will see what that means later. So let's go here back to map mode. Okay, so we're descending nicely, nicely, nicely. There you can see the coast of Florida. working for now we're here next to the Bahamas you can see right there nice very nice descent so this is done what we do can select is our decision height so here I'm from my chart that I have it says that the decision height for the ILS is 200 feet above ground. So we're going to select that. Oh, where is it? Oh, it's enabled. Oh, oh, I don't like that. Well, yeah, some things in X-Plane are not, a and are not uh, yeah, enabled, so sorry for that. That means it cannot change it. Okay. No problem. We have to work with what you have. Good, so nicely working for now. As you can see, we're right now descending on um, Mac airspeed, and as soon as we reach 280 knots, it gets to it. So now we want to keep 280 knots throughout the whole descent. It's going to be a fast speed that's going to have us descending nicely with a little bit of nose down attitude like this
you can see that it manages the vertical speed completely automatically well you might have a question now does this work only for this airplane or it actually works for the 737 or the 777 well it only works for the 747 and the 30s and the 737 it works exactly that like that as soon as you reach your top of descent which we have already reached a couple of minutes ago you just press vertical speed and it automatically takes it the difference here is that in the 747 you don't see the numbers until you actually press vertical speed in the 737 you start seeing the numbers but they are not enabled once you press the button they are enabled that's the only difference the rest works exactly the same the bottoms are kind of different places more or less but but it's actually the same it's it, it's very intuitive you can see that it's automatically managing the throttle also because if I move it manually it gets it back by itself if you can see it there although I don't have any kind of aileron control here I'm moving my iPad to the left and to the right and I can't do anything nor up so we are about to reach the forward waypoint and if I'm not mistaken once we get there we will head direct to Florida so you can see that Florida is actually on our left we're not heading to there so once we get to Fowey, this waypoint right here Fowey, the W is hidden uh, we'll head direct to Florida Cool. you can see here in our progress page we expect Fowey in 2 nautical miles, Junior in 41 Lovely in 68 and actually Miami in 113 nautical miles looking good match our heading indicator that's a very good habit to keep on there you go and now we're heading to Miami if you've just joined the video here well we are about to land in Miami International Airport runway 9 looking good for now nice nice this approach to Miami is very easy and very 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 fun well one thing that I do have to mention here from the way 747 is that you cannot arm the speed brake in the 737 and in most aircraft you can put this speed brake lever here where it says arm you see there right there in the center what that does is that as you soon did as soon as you sorry as soon as you touch down as soon as our sensor on the wheels of the aircraft feels that the aircraft has landed it deploys the speed brake that works on most aircraft and even in the 747 in the real 747 here it doesn't it's one of the bad things about this aircraft but it does kind of all the other things very 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 good so nothing to worry about nothing at all descending into flight level 220 Miami approach good afternoon United 28 correction United 1578 is passing fly level 220 for Fly level one two zero. One two zero here. Yeah. United fifteen seventy eight report after lovely. Report after lovely United fifteen seventy eight. And do we have any descent altitude restrictions? No restriction for the descent. No restrictions for the descent. Thank you very much. All right. Our next frequency is going to be tower, so we are ready for that. In aviation, you always want to be ahead of things. You want to know what's going to happen. You want to know when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and be ready for that. That helps both the pilots, but also the controllers and all the aviation um, people of it that are, I mean, in the air, that are controlling the airspace. All of that because things get accelerated 
imagine, as we this I'm gonna tell you a little story, imagine that you are on ground, you are a foreign pilot, you are flying to a country in which you don't know their native language, and you want to know the departure frequency. So you listen carefully, and you hear that they are telling another aircraft that the departure frequency is, I don't know, 119.5, for example. So you hear that and you say, oh yeah, the departure frequency is going to be 119.5. So let's keep that as, let's note that. So that if that is actually the departure frequency, we are ready for it. And it happens, it happens very, very often. And so if you have an ATC that just says contact, up, contact departure, you already know that that's the frequency. So all those things, that's called situational awareness. On in, in real aviation, it's called situational awareness, and it's very, very, very good. It's part of what makes aviation safe. A big part of what makes aviation safe, actually. Very big part. Okay, so ATC told us to report after lawfully, so we will do so. And we have no descent restrictions which means we can go ahead to descend and descend to 3000 which is the altitude at which we're going to 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 join the ILS so let's see if yeah there you go as you can see we're right here in this airway the VR 49 Victor airway we're gonna be turning right here to Junior then direct oh, 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 oh. then direct to Junior here and direct to Lovely and after that we will report we will make this then turn left to this then turn right do this turn right again join the ILS for the landing descend 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 and land here on this runway so we're gonna tune the frequency for that this is one one zero point nine or tune f1 also tune f2 Oops, tune F1. Okay, so we are ready. Cool. This arrival into Florida is very, very nice. I really like this airport. You may ask right now, SE Aviation, what is that thing that we are seeing there? Well, that is the missed approach procedure. In case we have to go around, we're going to do a holding. So that is actually if we went around, that the route intercepts where we are, where we are about to reach. But we're not going to be doing that. If we do go around, we will be flying that holding pattern. Um, usually, real aircraft don't because as soon as they grow and they go, they get vectors, vectors back to the runway. But if there is a lot of aircraft and they have to keep them holding because you can't just keep every aircraft flying with vectors, that will be dangerous. Um, they keep it, yeah, in the holding pattern. So descending to flight level 140. Once you get below the flat the transition level, which is usually eighteen thousand feet on the on the US, you don't say flight levels anymore, you now say altitude. So one thousand feet of altitude, two thousand feet of altitude, five thousand feet of altitude, ten thousand feet of altitude, fourteen thousand feet of altitude, eighteen thousand feet of altitude, and then Flight level 190, flight level 200, flight level 210, flight level 220, all the way up to flight level 600 if you want. That will be 16, correction, 60,000 feet. 60,000 feet. So, yeah, that's something to note. Okay, so very nice. So you can see we have started our descent. I'm gonna be reaching back to you when we get after Lovely. Bye bye.